So good morning, everyone. This is my first time to give Dharma talk at the Manhattan Temple. And so I'm very honored to be here this morning. Uh, I, I always respect and appreciate uh, what Venerable Lee and Reverend Doyon doing it here for all important activities and services for the well-being of the individual and the society. I'm very uh, honored for that. I'm working at the One Institute of Graduate Studies in Glenside, Pennsylvania. It's a very small school, um, professional school, but uh, we are offering very special program, like Toyon said, um, Masters of One Buddhist Studies program and Masters of <coughs> Acupuncture Studies program. And so all those programs support well-being for individual and society. And I work there from like early 2000. So it's like almost 17 years I have been working there. So uh, during that time, I could see like very gradual and slow, but I see the growth of the school. And at the same time, I can see the English speaking uh, members group is growing in the US. So I'm very happy to see all of you here. Especially <coughs> yesterday, one of our One Buddhist Studies um, American students, she introduced her insights, uh, what she learned from Korea. She visited Korea for four weeks, a special program at the Yongsan University. Um, and she shared with the members in Philadelphia One Buddhist Temple yesterday. And it was very powerful because she really shared her own experience, how she really matched with her, what she learned in the US and what she really experienced in the Korea, the historical um, area of One Buddhism. <coughs> so she was very happy about it. And other members respond very well. So hopefully in the future, more people have more deeper understanding of One Buddhism and found some peace in their life. That's my hope. Today, I'd like to, this very uh, special morning, I'd like to share with you uh, Dharma words of uh, Iwan Sang. It's part of our scripture. We recite the Iwan Sang vow this morning. And this Dharma words of uh, Iwan Sang is more like a detail of how we apply uh, the practice in our daily life. So when you see that um, in the scripture, you can see really my sotes and draw the picture of the so first beginning is just one circle here. So after we enlighten what happened, how you understand the truth. And next page is like six circles. So this one sang is to be used whenever you use six sense organs. So it's not separate from us, but our body really uh, give you the chance to practice mindfulness, practice in daily life. So he said, Master Sotelan said, when we enlighten to our Buddha nature, we can clearly see connectedness of all things in the universe. All beings in the, in the earth is connected to each other, like one big family, right? like this complete circle. And as in the past, when people got enlightened, they can see all these connections. But these days, because of scientific uh, improvement, every morning when you open your eyes, you can hear the story of the news all around the world just one hour before what happened, uh, other countries, or this United States itself is very big, so what happened in other states. So whenever we open our eyes, we hear all those uh, news, but mostly negative news. So make us some depressed, or sometimes it's too much to carrying out this suffering in the world with us. So. Uh, sometimes we just focus on our own work instead of look around everything in the world. I think that's important part of our practice too. But if you just close your eyes and then just focus on your work, it doesn't mean you are not connected to anyone. It's like all news you hear, you influenced by that in somehow, some ways. Like when you use some paper cup and you throw away the trash can, 
doesn't make it disappear. It just uh, disappear from my eyesight, but it goes somewhere else and transform their form and come back to us in other forms. So all things in the universe looks like sometimes we cannot see it, but somehow influence to us. That is why a person who practice well, she or he use their true nature, Buddha nature, whenever they use their six sense organs. Um, so that they are aware of uh, or be mindful of interconnectedness of all things in the universe in our daily life. Then how do we use our mind or six sense organs uh, well um, in during a day? So Mr. Sutesan said first, one circle, she, he used uh, draw one circle and say, this one sun is to be used when we use our eyes. It is perfect and complete, utterly impartial and selfless. So like see this image, how um, completeness and perfect as it is. Um, and all things really connected to each other. Um, and there's no self-centered mind there. So for example, when we close our eyes and meditate, we clearly hear and feel something going on in my body or something outside, what's going on, without judgment, just let it be. But when you open your eyes, really involved in your life, it's really hard sometimes. So for example, I know one little girl, little child, uh, one of our minister's daughter. She's now seven, six years old. Uh, I saw her from the very early childhood and very close uh, to see her and then play with her. So one day I visit her and play with her and when I, I leave and her mom said, why well, say goodbye to uh, minister? And she didn't look at me even. Uh, she just do something else, not say goodbye at all. And so I left the home and uh, after I see that, I'm thinking, my thinking arising, maybe she doesn't like my visit, maybe she's unhappy for something. But later on, her mom said, oh, that means um, she likes you, so she doesn't want to separate with you. So that she kind of ignored the say goodbye <laughs> that moment. Every time she's doing it, and, and I didn't uh, understand before, but I just accept things as they are when I see her unhappy face and curious about it, what's going on? And when I hear the story, I, and I really understand her more. So now we are more close to each other. So it's like our first sight, some judging thought coming around from my mind. It's based on my experience or my thought, but it's not based on their story, right? So see things as they are is kind of very important practice. And second is, uh, this one song is to be used when you use, ear, uh, when you use your ears. It is perfect and complete, utterly impartial and selfless. Hear the sound. So it's like how we use your ears. It's very important. Um, so I share a lot of my experience and you can share your experience when we have discussion time afterwards. Uh, in our dormitory, I live in the dormitory with ministers and students. And so uh, we have morning meditation together and nighttime we chant together. And because some of our students taking nighttime classes, uh, we could not do everyday chanting together. Uh, so someday we do, someday we do not. It depends on their schedule. And from one moment, I hear the sound of chanting like late night, 9.30 p.m. We usually do chanting at nine o'clock. And so I thought, oh, somebody chant. And it's getting louder and louder. <laughs> oh, who chant that loudly? That's coming up to my mind. And next thoughts coming up, like why they don't talk to me um, because I'm an advisor of the dormitory. They should tell me what they don't tell me and then gather like, I look at who are they and see three 
uh, shoes out there in the meditation hall. So maybe three people get together in that late night. And all thoughts coming around me. And I just said, this is just sound of the chanting and the old story I created after that. So sound of chanting, and I hear deeply in my mind and said, oh, maybe I'm, I'm, I want to chant together. And uh, why they didn't invite me, that's the kind of issue. <laughs> Nobody tell me. And also some part of me say, oh, they should open their session to everyone. So all thoughts coming up, but I really see deeply my self-centered <laughs> judgment. Next day, I talked to the student who did chant that late night and asked her, do you chant these days at 9.30? And she said, yes. So I said, can I join you? And she said, yes, sure. So I participated that night. Uh, after that, I really enjoyed the nighttime meditation. We need to be a little quieter because somebody bothered by the sound. But um, after really hear deeply my voice in me, um, say, before I judging something, I clearly see my mind. Just sound is a sound. Then there is some wisdom coming up. So that's kind of open my uh, self-centered mind. That's kind of open opportunity to practice more deeply. So that's make me to connect with them more deeply. And this one song is to be used when we use our nose. It is perfect and complete, utterly impartial and selfless. The so nose just function as they are. You can discern some smell. This is what kind of smell, and this is what kind of smell. That's good. Um, but sometimes you, your mind is just following by the smell. So you're judging yourself. Oh, this is a good smell um, and attractive. Uh, it could be food, it could be a person, it could be some place. Um, sometimes we didn't really aware of it. I, I like to be there. I don't know why. But when you look deeply, sometimes the smell is very good, like incense or something in there. So when we colored by our own perception about smell, then all thoughts coming up too, based on that. But um, one day I bothered by some smell in the room, and I realized one person uh, come, and then I, I can felt. Uh, so <laughs> and one day I talked to her, or oh, maybe uh, did you eat something before you come here? Maybe that could be bothered by uh, other people, maybe doesn't like that. I told her she didn't really, uh, she didn't like it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at myself, where it come from this mind and this kind of my own thoughts coming up? Because this is my preference, not her preference. And I look at myself, oh, I create a lot of smell too, but I didn't really aware of it. Or I colored by like self, myself, this is good or bad. So after I realize that mind, and then I'm more open mind, then it doesn't bother me anymore. But there's many situations, smell is very important cue for you to understand other people too. So using your nose, um, when you use your nose like Yigong Sang, perfect, complete, utterly impartial and selfless way is give you a lot of practice too. And then he said, uh, this one song is to be used when you use our tongues. It is perfect and complete utterly impartial and selfless. How can you use our tongue uh, the selfless way? Uh, it's in Korean version, it's mouth. So this tongue means when you use your mouth whenever. So it could be eating or saying something, speaking mindfully. It's very important. Without it, you, some, taste is, some food tastes good and you eat too much uh, or, or like you, you don't have to speak at the moment, but meaninglessly just say something. Could be hurt others' feeling. I don't remember, but they remember, right? So sometimes silence is very important. Uh, so when you go to retreat, 
like beginning of the ritual, sometimes we keep the silence as a practice because we use our mouth very uh, often without thinking. So like save your energy mindfully and whenever it's really necessary, you use your words very carefully and mindfully. That's very powerful. So uh, like this, uh, using our mouth very mindfully is very important. And this one song is to be used when we use our bodies. It is perfect and complete, earthly, impartial, and selfless. How we can use our body this way, based on our Buddha nature, how can we use our body? Um, there's many different like uh, interpretation where you can share your practice. Uh, in my case, the so body, your body tells you many important messages if you listen carefully. So when we getting like getting aging or illness coming to our body, we bodies kind of give us some sign. Uh, you're stressed too much these days. Your work schedule too much these days or you, your body is not a uh, good condition right now. You need some rest. They kind of see kind of sign coming up, but if we ignore and use it too much, then create more suffering in your body. And in my case, like end of April, I kind of fell down somehow and my ankle twist. And so I have pain in my ankle, um, but it looks like my, it's not, looks not that much injured there. And I go to the hospital and the, it's not broken my leg. So it's a little bit of a twist of my muscle. So I thought it would be okay to use it. And I use it whenever I need it. And what happened was that um, now this September, still, still I have pain in my ankle. So it it's looks like getting better, but get worse again. And it's never <laughs> go away. Uh, so my mind go like, I want to uh, healing myself fast, but this body is not, it's belong to me, but it's not really, uh, it's part of the nature, right? It's not following by my will. And I accept, yes, um, my body also uh, needs some time to healing and it takes time then my thoughts. So, these days, mindfully, I use my, um, I listen to my body and use it very uh, carefully and mindfully, so not misuse too much or overuse too much. Uh, so taking care of your body as it is is very important. Like body, sometimes people complain about their body shape or face or weight, or but uh, find out middle way how we see our body as a nature, part of the nature, and see as they are, and taken care of in a healthy way is always based on your Buddha nature. You're taking care of your body as a part of the nature. And lastly, this one song is to be used when we use our minds. It is perfect and complete, utterly impartial and selfless. In Buddhist teaching, the mind creates everything, right? So we use our six sense organs based on how we see ourselves and this mind go everywhere. Uh, so some uh, Buddhist teaching in the picture, you can see like there's a monkey mind in six windows. So whenever you use your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, this mind is everywhere and react. So instead of react everything, we just be centered our mind and using our mind based on our Buddha nature. So before you react all uh, sensory conditions, pause a little bit and mindfully respond to our situation. That's very important and it takes time to cultivating in that way. But like Master Sotesan said, in each moment, when you have some strong emotion or feeling coming up based on some sensory condition, and that's the chance to look back yourself and what kind of 
uh, mind react through these uh, conditions or trying situations and reflect on that and respond well. That's part of our practice. Uh, I'd like to share like, a little story. There's a one uh, king in the kingdom. Uh, he really likes color of red. And so he wants to coloring everything in red. Uh, everyone in the kingdom, they need to wear red color dress and paint red color in the castle and everything. But he finally find out one thing he cannot do is the sky. How can he color in the sky in red? It's impossible. So he is very sad about it. And one of his very wise advisors, uh, he said, oh, there's a way you can color in the sky. Do you know what it is? Red glasses. Hmm? Red glasses, right, right. So he gave him red glasses. So he wear it, the king wear the red glasses, everything red, he's very happy, satisfied. And after that, other people doesn't have to wear a red dress anymore <laughs> because he see everything red, so it doesn't have to be red. Oh, this is like a little funny story. But um, our own perception create the world in their own color. At least it's, it's kind of like, where did you grow up? Like, uh, depends on your culture, uh, language, and family, um, location where you grew up. Depends on that, you have certain uh, education you have that colored your perception. So everybody has all their color and see things in that perception. Is there anything you cannot really color in yourself? That could be very big and good question. Even enlightened masters, they have their characteristics too. Depends on where they grew up, right? Personality and characteristics. So be aware of my own perception is very important. It doesn't mean let go of everything, but just aware of it. Oh, I have this perception, that's why I see things as in this way and that way. That make us more open our mind and learning from each other. So in closing words, um, Master Sotesan said, a person who practices well is not separate from the self-nature. And so the way to practice, uh, so we cannot separate from our Buddha nature, is that Whenever you use your sex, six sense organs based on your Buddha nature and mindful response is the best way. And so why is that there is a samsara for sentient beings but liberation for all the Buddhas and sages? What is the reason? This is one of the koan in the scripture. And I contemplated and I thought, yes, depends on how we practice it. You really practice and actualizing that uh, Buddha nature in our life, then we can transform from my habitual pattern to liberation. But if you keep following the pattern you have already, then you cannot get out of that. It's very hard. Uh, so uh, that's why we chant Iran Sang vow. Iran Sang vow is kind of our uh, vow to practice ourselves based on this Buddha nature. Because a lot of uh, sensory condition, trying situation happen in our life. Without vow, it's hard to keep continuing our practice. So hopefully this Dharma talk help your practice and growing your spiritual life more. Thank you.